Today I would like to tell you about big data and political campaigns. So what is the big data? The big data is the collection of uh, information from all over. And then this information, when collected, it is used to determine patterns in this data. And then these patterns are analyzed in order to produce tailored messages. These messages, they are called micro-targeting, and individual voters are targeted in the way to, um, to uh, determine uh, their preferences, political preferences, and then when they read the messages that appear online, they are more responsive to those messages. So modern political campaigns, they use big data a lot. And the first uh, the first person, the first political uh, figure to use big data in political campaigns was actually Barack Obama in his 2013 presidential campaign. He was even called the big data president by the Washington Post. Of course, the big data was used before, but its usage was very expensive and there were not a lot of people who could analyze the data properly. So after his campaign and the success of his uh, campaign, uh, more and more people uh, started to use the big data. Uh, we have all heard of the Donald Trump's uh, 2016 presidential campaign and also the Brexit vote uh, that were using the big data and the Cambridge Analytica scandal. But those are rather, um, you know, the cases, they are widely known, um, but it's not only uh, these type of uh, campaigns use the big data. Uh, the big data comes from all over. It is usually publicly available, so there is no problem f with collecting the data. Uh, the data that is used in political campaigns, it comes first of all from census, and in census we have the level of income of people, we have uh, the number of people living in the household, we have the number of children, we have uh, ethnicity data of individual voters. Of course, this data then is aggregated and what we see online, what we can download online, is an average data for a district. But still, this information is very useful. Why is it useful? Well, because uh, when we know that uh, voters living in a particular postcode, in a particular district, they are on average of a particular income, they are on average uh, of a particular educational background, they are of a particular ethnicity, and we know from previous election campaigns that those voters with these socioeconomic characteristics, they tend to vote more for a particular candidate, then this information can be used in order to predict uh, who they will vote in the future for, right? So um, this is very useful a piece of information even at the aggregate level. Then another piece of information that is used in order to create the big data for political campaign purposes is the consumer databases. Those consumer databases, they actually have personal information on individual level. This information can be the address, the phone number, the email address, other socioeconomic uh, characteristics of a person. And uh, we, as internet users, we make this data available when we, for example, shop online and there is a box saying that, would you like to share your personal information uh, with uh, the third parties for marketing purposes? If we tick this box, then this information can be shared with the third parties or can be sold to them. So we should be aware of this fact whenever we do online shopping or we just browse the internet. Uh, then this data can be matched with social media data. So the data that comes from Twitter, from Facebook, from Instagram. There are special tools called data mining tools that uh, can download your posts, your tweets, uh, using the keywords or some hashtags. And so all of the tweets or, or posts that contain those keywords will be downloaded and then analyzed. Whether you use, uh, whether you, 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 know, you have positive or negative connotations when you use those keywords. This is the, the information that is also used in the political campaign purposes because it determines whether the person writing this post 
is, uh, is actually happy uh, about a particular party, about a particular candidate, or about a particular issue, or is not happy. And then, knowing when, where this person is located, because, well, very often we give this information publicly. We uh, post where we live, we post who we are, and so uh, it is very easy to determine uh, what kind of person we are. Uh, and then this, uh, this information from the social media, from census, from consumer databases can also be matched with the data that is collected by the political campaign. So the political campaign also collects uh, data, first of all, on their donors, so people who contribute to them, and also uh, about their volunteers, people who help them for free. And so they know uh, what type of person uh, is more prone, uh, is more likely to donate money to their cause, and also what kind of people with, with certain socioeconomic characteristics uh, is more prone to, to help them with their issues and be their volunteer. And so when they know those characteristics, uh, they, they can also target specific population with a similar characteristics uh, with particular messages. And these messages, they are tailored to the preferences um, that, that those voters have. Uh, and also, the, the political campaigns, they collect uh, information about, the, uh, about people who subscribed to their newsletters, for example. And so, are they able to determine whether the uh, person who opens their newsletter uh, the person is more likely to open the newsletter about gender issues, for example, or tax issues, for example. And so these people with particular socioeconomic characteristics who open the uh, newsletter on gender issues, for example, twice as often than a newsletter on tax issues, will then be targeted with the messages about gender issues, obviously. And so, all in all, political campaigns, they collect these, uh, these massives of information, they put them together, then they employ special data analysts who are able to analyze this data, and then they look for patterns in the data. So they want to know uh, who are the people who are more responsive to messages about gender, to messages about taxes, to messages about uh, equality of, of rights, etc., etc. And then they post the tailored messages uh, online to those individuals. And this process is called micro-targeting. So it's when uh, a particular group of people receive targeted messages, targeted and tailored specifically for them based on their socioeconomic characteristics. And these messages, they appear online. They can appear on Google, they can appear on Facebook, very similar to the, the ads that we see when we open our browser. And then we see that, hey, yesterday I was looking for, um, for a particular uh, product online, and now I can see an ad about this product in my Google or in my Facebook. So very similarly, political campaigns use these tools in order to produce those tailored messages, political messages. But there is an issue with them because if only a small group of people sees them, that it means that um, they are subject to potential manipulation or maybe even disinformation. And so the voters must be especially careful when, uh, when looking at those messages. And they should always try to seek um, information from several sources and not to trust just uh, information from one source, but rather try to compare different sources of information. Uh, so, after the Cambridge Analytica scandal that happened a couple of years ago, when this company used, um, used information from Facebook users without their consent in order to produce uh, micro-targeted messages, European Union and also other countries, they started to think about how to protect users that share the information online and what they can do about that. And so, as of May 2018, the European Union introduced a special uh, data protection regulation that is a step forward in protecting the data 
that we have. And it's not only about the data shared online, it's about our personal data you know, that we share anywhere. Also, uh, the internet giants like Google, Twitter, Mozilla, they are obliged to produce each year the self-assessment reports about the way they protect their users and the data that their users share. And also, uh, they, uh, for example, Google and Facebook, um, they are supposed to publish you know, to publish each year information, statistics on the um, political ads that they uh, publish from uh, different political parties. So now this information is publicly available, which is a great plus. However, there are uh, still some scope, or there is still some scope for improvement, especially in light of the you know recent developments and the massive, uh, uh, massive disinformation that is going on uh, in the world and all of the political um, campaign uh, messages, they must be regulated in a way that the information is true and that uh, all of the voters receive uh, the same information and uh, not just the group of voters that is targeted with the particular online messages.